So, welcome back to the team's new session with Alexander Eggers. Um, thank you, Alexander, for being here and presenting the team's news, like not like every time, but like uh, yeah, 95% of all the summits we, uh, we did in the past. So, yeah, perhaps you introduce yourself to the, um, to the attendees. And like every time, I will hide from the stage and hand, you hand the stage over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Christian, and, and welcome here to this session. And we're good looking here with your nice shirts. I uh, usually wear a white uh, shirt, and now I have seen you in the beginning at six o'clock, so I changed quick uh, the shirt. So, yeah. Welcome here, uh, the world. The world is a, a, a guest here in Germany now. And um, so I welcome you all, and uh, let's see. Now, I have the picture and I want to show you, of course, today the team's updates from the last two months, uh, what has happened, what will come in the future. So we will also have a preview what will come up. So first of all, I should introduce myself. Well, before I do this, I will show you a view in our video studio, what I'm presenting right from here. Uh, the EPC studio in Nienburg, we built up this studio and... Uh, um, so we try to do always good content, uh, very interactive with our attendees. And now you have a full view in the studio, of course. So the German, of course, know my studio. So let's see who I am. My name is Alex Eggers and I'm uh, presenting here from Germany. Um, I'm a um, managing director of the EPC GmbH. I'm Microsoft MVP for Office Apps and Services. And my special topic is Microsoft Teams. So please follow me on LinkedIn or on my YouTube channel, especially the YouTube channel is mainly in German, but LinkedIn is also with some English content. So I will be happy to connect to you. I will be happy. So today we talk about this. This is the agenda for today. Let's see, we have meeting updates, general updates, chat updates, admin updates, communication updates, meeting room updates, and the preview. But of course, because we have so many updates, I will just bring you the best what I've seen for user experience. So not only for administration and security, this is not the special part. The part today is for end users who are using this solution. So let's see, we right start here with the meeting updates because of course meeting is um, a big part here. Um, what we are using since the Corona uh, or COVID um, happened. So let's see what meeting updates we got in the last two months. See here, we have the possibility to pin or to deactivate our own video in the meetings. As you might have heard, um, some people are not um, very amused to see themselves. So now you have the possibility to uh, uh, turn the, your video off. Well, you, you don't turn it off, it just slides to the side. So you have a small part where you can see your own video, but especially not yourself because it's just a small arrow leading there. So you click the arrow and the video picture comes back. And of course, you have the possibility to pin yourself. So the uh, way around, if it's um, more interesting for you to watch yourself in a bigger view. So you can do this now. What you also might have heard is uh, mirror imaging, uh, mirror the video image. The same problem I have here in AirMeet because when I start AirMeet and I see myself, I see myself uh, the way around in the mirror. So um, that's a little bit confused. Uh, I cannot read the slides on my own because they are mirrored. And now we have the possibility in Teams, maybe in AirMeet also, I don't know, Christian, but uh, in AirMeet we have the possibility to, to in Teams we have the possibility to um, mirror the image again. So of course, when you hold your right hand up, it will be the left hand in the video then. But um, especially when you have backgrounds, as you can see here in my slide, it's uh, so that you can read the text. So this might be a very important thing, especially if you're a teacher in school, maybe you want to show your slides um, so you can read them also. So mirror your image is in the options menu when you are within the meeting. Okay, then we have also the possibility to mute the notifications during a meeting. Uh, we all know this. You are in the meeting and uh, it pops up the messages and you don't want to have them, you don't want to hear them, but you cannot mute because when you mute your PC, you cannot hear the system sounds anymore. 
uh, and especially you cannot hear the attendees. So here's a possibility to mute only the notifications so that you don't hear and see them. So this is, might be a much better solution, especially when you have uh, sessions with many people in there, 100, 200 people, and the chat is heavy used. This is, uh, might be a good solution to uh, reduce the noise. So what do we have more in the meetings? Uh, we have also the music mode. Maybe you have heard of it. The music mode allows you to um, send better music uh, sessions uh, out in Microsoft Teams. Um, you can um, open these or you could start this Teams music mode uh, within the options menu from the Teams desktop client. Um, usually you, have, you can see here the, the node where you can able, enable it in the meeting, but you have to enable it first in your meeting option, in your options, uh, in your Teams desktop client. So this is very important just to see this node here to enable it. Um, yeah, as you can see here, we have some uh, technical parts, what might be interesting for you when you use this solution for transferring music over the Teams meeting. And what we also got now, finally, a long while we have the backgrounds uh, the virtual backgrounds in the microsoft teams web um, part so when you do not use the um, desktop app you can now uh, and you use the web edition uh, for teams you can now change also the background and you have the virtual backgrounds also then there i think this is very good because many customers of us use the web edition not everybody is using the uh, Teams desktop client, especially when he has no license, um, or maybe he gets invited to a Teams meeting and he has no license. So this is a possibility then to also change the background. Yeah, for the technical people in here, as we are having this video studio, of course, we are using uh, a lot of uh, technical things to make all this happen. And one uh, good thing is that you can send the uh, Teams live stream uh, a special video meeting from a special participant to a special hardware around your uh, studio and there's a black magic support uh, we are also using here black magic so not everybody of you is using uh, a video studio but just uh, if you are, uh, might be interesting in streaming teams meetings uh, out to the world on youtube or every, wherever you can use this black magic support for this so what we also have is we have the MS Forms open question survey. Um, so when you have an app, the Forms app, or now it's the Polls app, maybe you've heard it's not any more uh, Forms, it's Polls. The Polls app, um, now you can also ask questions, open questions. And as you might know, we have al already, or we always see this on some websites, uh, the answers. Uh, the word that's answered even more is bigger, so you can have here an overview and ask maybe the people, okay, what is your opinion or what is your mood or whatever, so they can answer you and you have this word cloud that you can use within the forms of Paul's app in meetings. So, and what we also have, I think this is very important update. So listen, you have the possibility now to unmute yourself just by pressing Control and Spacebar or on the Mac, Option and Spacebar. I think this is really cool. And what, I've, uh, what I thought was wrong is when you press strong um, um, Control and Spacebar, it enables uh, the mute. And when you press again, it disables. But this is not the way it works. I'm so sorry for that. It's just the way. When you are muted and you press uh, control and spacebar, the time you hold it down, you are unmuted. So when you leave uh, the fingers from the, um, from the keys, you will be muted again, okay? So this is just like a walkie-talkie. You press, you can speak, you leave, you cannot speak. And you have to answer, enable this option right here in the GDPR uh, options in, this is the German slide, I'm sorry for this, but in the options, you will have the possibility to enable this solution, pressing control and spacebar to unmute you yourself during pressing this button. So, okay, that was the meeting updates for uh, the last two months. And let's see some general updates, uh, what I can talk about. And this is a very special topic, guys. You know this, we have always the problem that when we have a channel within the Microsoft Teams team, and you change the name of the channel, what happens beside on the SharePoint site? Nothing. 
nothing happens because it does not, or in the past, it did not change the name of the, of the uh, folder where, within SharePoint. So when you change the channel name in a Teams team and you move over to SharePoint, the channel name is not the same or the folder name is not the same as the channel name. So this was a big problem. And they announced a long time ago that they want to change this, I think last year in April or May. And now we got it. Finally, we have this update. Uh, when you change, uh, you rename the Teams channel, the corresponding SharePoint folder will also be renamed. Uh, what I think is important is also for private channels, this works, but this one is, uh, is very important. Existing channels that have already been renamed will not be changed. So this will not work in the past. So only for the channels uh, renaming in the future. So be, be aware of this, but this is a, a good solution. Well, when, if you are correct, this should ha have ever been this way, but it's not. So now it is the way it should be. Okay, what we have also new, is the new workflows in the App Store. Well, new workflows? No, not new workflows in the App Store. What, what is new here? Maybe you know you have the Power Automate app within Microsoft Teams and you have the workflows where you can make little things automating, automatic um, working for you. This is really cool with the Power Automate app, but the problem is that not all um, customers or not all um, uh, users or use this Power Automate app. So what Microsoft changed now is when you go in the App Store, you have two um, uh, cards, register cards, where you can enter, first of all, the apps and on the other side, the workflows. So next to the apps, we have no workflows. This is mainly the same as we have in the Power Automate app, but it's a different place now where you can find it. So many more customers and users should find this solution to work, to build up new workflows within Microsoft Teams. This is pretty cool. Just have a look on the workflows. There are many good things there. Okay, what well, we also have new triggers uh, for Power Automate, as we've just spoken about Power, over Power Automate. If you're using Power Automate, we have now new triggers uh, and new actions like created teams meetings, send message to a channel, get match, add match and token, create a team, add users to a team, and new Power Automate triggers. User leaves a team. So when somebody is leaving your team, you will get a whatever, a notification or whatever you want. You can build this with Power Automate. So have a look at Power Automate, the app. I think this is also a pretty cool um, uh, update. What we got is that the local time is added to the personal profile. Maybe you've seen it as rolled out in the last, I, I think, three weeks or so. When you hover, hover over the, um, the picture of the person, you can now see here uh, under the contact the local time of this person where he is working and living. So uh, maybe this helps you when you have um, more people or more uh, employees uh, overall in the world uh, to see which time they are working at or which time there right now is. Okay, these are the general updates. Mainly we have this in the other uh, updates parts. Uh, here have, we have the chat updates. Let's see what we have here. Pinning chats. Uh, well, pinning chats is not a, such a new one, or is it? Pinning chat, we have done pinning chats before. I don't know why Microsoft announced this one's new, but I show you this because of Microsoft Loop. I don't know if you Microsoft Loop, but you should know it. This will dramatically change how we work together. It was uh, announced, or oh, well, it, it uh, went general, uh, general, general. Now, it went uh, live in, the, in, in mid of December, I think. So you will have it in the chat. Just have a look in the Microsoft Teams chat and then you will find a new logo. It's uh, the fourth part from the left. Um, it's a short circle. And as you've seen here, here it is. And um, when you use Loop, you can work together in uh, this uh, chat and you can also use this to work within a website and in the future. You will have uh, this part where you can work together also in OneNote and emails or whatever in on the whole Office 365 area. So what I want to tell you here is when we are using Loop, you will see that this is a, a just a normal chat message where you can work together. But the main problem is, of course, 
when you chat more, this loop will drive up. And what I think is a great solution, and that's why I tell you, you just go on pin this uh, Microsoft loop in the chat and it will be pinned at the top of your chat. And so you have a much quicker view on, the, uh, on this loop. Uh, even if it's three or four days away or two weeks away in the chat, you will always and fast find it back. The only problem is you can only pin one message. Uh, so it's only one loop what you can pin. But think about this, if you're using loop and you will use it in the future, I promise you, this is so cool. So uh, just remember to pin your loop if you're using this. So what we also have is chat density. We can change this. Uh, this goes out to, uh, as a little welcome to the um, um, Slack users. Uh, maybe you know how Slack chat looks like. So you have the possibility in the general options to change the chat density. And as you can see here, this is how it looks before, as you know, of course, I'll give it a little bigger. And here you can see now how it looks a bit a little smaller. Of course, you can see much more text uh, within uh, this chat window, but what I think is a little bit of shame, it's all on the left side. So if you can see here, we have uh, it on the left on the right side. And in the new chat density window, you have all on the left side. As I told you before, this might be a solution or um, something that the Slack users uh, are used to. Let's see. So this is one thing. We go over to the next part. I have to look at the watch. It's also, it's uh, almost half past seven here. The admin updates, a very fast one. Uh, so let's see what we have here. Mandatory comments in the approvals app. So the admins can now um, start that it is um, uh, mandatory to do comments in the approvals app when you don't want it or you want to accept it or you re reject it. Yeah. Be before, in the past, it has been the possibility to just accept or reject without any comment. And this is now uh, possible to have this um, solution that you have to answer a comment when you want to reject or accept um, approval. And the apps in the Teams admin center, just for the admins under us, you have the possibility now to see under manage apps, you just open an app and you will see the permissions, the settings, security and compliance. So all the informations you need as an admin for this uh, third party app. Also what you have, uh, we announced it earlier, plans and pricing. They are the first apps now online where you can um, buy this app uh, in the Teams admin center. So you don't have to go on the website from the a special, a special app. So you just buy it here within Microsoft Teams Admin Center. So we go to the communication updates a little bit faster and let's see, we have the walkie talkie function. Um, maybe you have heard of it. I will show you how it works. First of all, if you want to use it, you have to allow walkie talkie in the managed apps. You will search for walkie talkie and you allow this. This is also for the admins, of course, not the normal users can do this. But when the normal users say, we want this, you go to your admins and they will show you. So how it looks like, you can use it on your mobile phone. As you can see here, we have now the walkie talkie. You go on the down here on more, and then you will see walkie talkie. I will show, give you a bit bigger. You see here walkie talkie and I can start walkie talkie and I have to choose a channel because it works like this, that you open the walkie talkie app in a special channel in the Teams team channel and everybody who is doing this you can talk to them directly as the walkie talkie so you just press the button and everybody who is listening on this channel will hear you just like walkie talkies and the main point is what I think first of all when you're using this in an area where you needed walkie talkies in the past you just use your mobile phone because all the people who are using walkie-talkie, maybe they also have a, a mobile phone in their, in their pocket. So they just need the mobile phone. This is very nice. And what's the big difference? When you use a walkie-talkie, you can only use it in the space area where you are. When you use walkie-talking in Microsoft Teams, you can do walkie-talking from India to America, to Germany. It's no problem because walkie-talkie is working everywhere not as the normal walkie-talkie where you just can use it uh, nearby.
So this is a pretty nice update, what I think. And to show you, uh, they are rolling out more and more stuff on this. You can now use the walkie-talkie app also on the Teams phone. So if you want to uh, use it as a dispatcher maybe um, and talk to the people uh, outside or wherever, you can use it also here on the Teams desktop phone. So we come, before we come to the previews, we have more updates on the meeting rooms. Let's see. Okay, have some minutes left. New features in uh, iOS users and Teams rooms. Now, even easier to join Teams rooms meeting, you can use interactive elements such as chat, raise your hands, or use the whiteboard. Uh, this is pretty cool because when we're going in the Teams meeting with the meeting room, you cannot interact as you are used to interact. Usually, you have to enter also when you're sitting in the meeting room with your laptop just to use hands up or, or to you send a, a thumbs up. Or you can use the uh, console of, of the meeting room system, but uh, this is usually not there where you are sitting. So this is a big problem. And also not when you're six people in the room, it doesn't make sense. So now you can use your mobile phone and if you're in the meeting room uh, with the Teams rooms meeting, uh, Teams room system, sorry, you can um, access it via your mobile phone and just what you have a small slides or desks where you can, buttons where you can enter a thumbs up or whatever, uh, see the chat. So this is pretty nice uh, what is coming out. So what we also have is the possibility to share uh, HDMI signal in a Teams room on Android. As you might know, when you have a Teams room on Android, the old collaboration bars, and you have them on the, on the screen. And now you want to share what your desktop, uh, what, your, what your laptop is showing. We are not in a Teams meeting. It's just to show with other people in the meeting room what you have on your, on your laptop. It was not possible in the past because you have to put your HDMI cable within the second slot of the TV. Well, the first slot is the uh, Teams on Android. So you have to use the second slot. And then you have to go there and change the source. And this is horror for just normal users. Changing source on the TV is. So this is not very nice. And now we have the possibility to share on Android. So if you have an Android solution, Teams Rooms, with an HDMI import, you can just uh, plug in your HDMI cable, plug it in your laptop. And even if you're not in a Teams meeting, it will show you what you have on your laptop screen without uh, changing um, the source on the TV. So what we do have more is Teams rooms on Android. Uh, now we have this on Windows uh, already, but if you have two monitors uh, on your Teams rooms on Android, it will show the people on both monitors, even um, especially when you're not, no, sorry, but if you're not sharing your screen, of course, then it's only one monitor, but when you're not sharing your screen, you will see all the participants on both screens. We already have this on Teams rooms for Windows. So this is a big update coming for Teams rooms on Android. I, I don't tell all about this for you. It's just a special things I show you, I've shown you. So I, I just want to show you here, there are many, many updates on Teams rooms and Android. So they are equal to the Teams rooms on Windows almost. So this is a new thing. I'm very excited to use this. Uh, and what happens now, the participants, in the Teams meeting can now um, change the view angel uh, angel from the uh, PC set uh, camera. If you're using a PC set camera in the meeting room, the participants, not in the meeting room, the participants outside of the meeting room can change the angle uh, and uh, zoom. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm very excited to see how this works, but this is now on Teams rooms on Windows possible. Uh, new phone experience on MTR for Windows. You can now also dial numbers uh, in a new way uh, to call out if you're using Teams telephony on your MTR. And the big update, guys, front row layout for Teams rooms, uh, for meetings rooms for Windows. I'm so excited because we have seen this in the, on Ignite in, in the last year. And they announced it and I thought, okay, yeah, guys, this will be something that we get in two years or three years whenever we get it. But now it is announced. It's already out. It's working. Yeah, we have the front row layout. It looks like this on the uh, meeting rooms for Windows. 
you can have the uh, participants at the fr uh, bottom row and the front row, and you have the raise hand, and here have the chat. Also, in the future, we will see something like agenda and to dos that are the loops. Do you remember the loops? You will use loops, I, sh I promise you. Uh, the loops will be here. So this is pretty nice. It's not uh, the final version. It's also the preview right now. But there are coming more and more updates, but it looks great. But one thing I have to tell you, if you want to buy a new monitor now or a new meeting room system for Windows, buy bigger screens. Because in this, in this layout, uh, something like share screen, is not very good to see because if your monitor is too small. So just you need bigger screens uh, and this is a great experience then. So last thing here is you have to, you can now use multiple cameras on the MTR for Windows. Uh, so you can change also the cameras on the console for the MTR for Windows. So let's see now the preview. I have four minutes left for the previews. What is coming up? This is brand new just from this week. Let's see here, it's on the 4th of March. Uh, we see casting desktop client to MTR. We know already this from the iOS devices, or maybe the Android, I, I don't know. But from the iOS devices, and especially you can uh, share your screen on the MTR for Windows. And now you have also the possibility to share your, or cast your um, uh, desktop client to the MTR. So if you're within a, a Teams meeting with your laptop, uh, or even if you don't want to use the HDMA cable in, you can just um, use this in the future. This will come in March. Let's see if this really comes in March. Um, you can use this um, to share your screen from your laptop. Forms for bookings, we have a new thing that is working. Well, forms and bookings, why is this in the Teams update? Sorry, there's nothing to do with Teams. <laughs> LinkedIn in Teams, we get a um, new integration of LinkedIn. Maybe you have seen we have the LinkedIn for going live on LinkedIn. We are also going live with my stream bro Ragnar Heil every th uh, Thursday, two weeks. And now we have also the possibility to add a LinkedIn profiles in the one-on-one -on -one chat. So we have a, a, a special um, uh, tab where you can add this so you can read all about in the one-on-one -on -one chat or the participants on LinkedIn. So new filters we have, uh, there will be new chat filters within the chat app with our, uh, which filters out meeting chats and chats with bots. So when you have this, you have a better overview on your chats, maybe just chat with special people and not with bots and meetings and so on. We also have video filters. Before joining a meeting, you can use a filter to subsequently adjust lightning levels. This is more an update because this is very old. Have a look here. We and it was announced on July 2020. 2020, my dear. Okay, now it got a little update in February that this will come in April. Maybe. Let's see. Here, this is a great update that will come. The co-organizer, you know, you um, um, make a new meeting and you are the organizer and no one else. And now on April, no, on March, on March, you will have the possibility to also change this and have a co-organizer in meetings. We already have this in the breakout rooms, maybe you know, but also we have this now for normal Teams meetings, you have a co-organizer. And then we have scheduling chat messages. This will come in July, so it's a little bit later, but it's, I think it's very interesting because with uh, Viva Insights, you can also send emails later, maybe to the working time of the participant or the, the, the person you want to email this. And uh, now we also get the possibility in July that you could do this with chat messages, yeah? relying or delaying uh, the delivery of chat messages. And the last one today, and uh, so we are also off the time, is determine what to see. Yeah, attendees will only see shared content and presenters that you bring on screen. I think this is a very nice thing. We talked about maybe uh, of live events. Maybe you have used live events before. This is also uh, special um, 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 presenters that are are shown in the live event, and the chat, uh, the participants cannot see themselves. They are just watching and kind of see themselves. In the Teams meeting, now it looks like we have also then the possibility to just show the speaker and maybe the shared screen and not all participants. Well, let's see when this comes out in April, how this works. So don't forget to follow me on LinkedIn. I'm very happy to see you there or on my website or of course on YouTube with the German content. And so I will go back to Christian. Thank you very much for watching here the team updates and have a great day. 
with the M365 Summit with uh, Solutions to Share and the sponsors. So thanks a lot, uh, Alex, for the team's news. Okay. Uh, so we have two questions. If you have uh, one more minute, yeah, we have a question for um, from uh, from the US, I think. Uh, are Teams rooms only for Android? What about iOS? I think you have to explain what is Teams room on Windows and Android. Yeah, a little okay. bit more. So uh, for, uh, just listen, we have the, the meeting rooms or the Teams rooms um, are a special software solution uh, for this Teams meetings. And we have two hardware, two different hardware devices, what we can use. The one is based on Windows. This was the older one. We, we have this on Windows based uh, solution a long time now. And then it comes up the new, it was first of all, the collaboration was, I think two years ago, they were uh, with Android. And the big difference is that the Android solutions are mainly all in one solutions. So you have one big box where the camera in, the macro phones are in and the speakers are in, and it all runs on Android. And um, when you're using meeting rooms, maybe you have meeting rooms that are a bit larger, um, more large, no, they are large, I'm sorry for my English, larger. And you have uh, maybe the need that you use a special camera, special speakers, special microphones, maybe many microphones because of the large rooms. So this is much better to use than with the Windows solutions for MTR because you have uh, a small nook and you can add all the uh, things that you need. It's just like uh, playing Lego, uh, all, the, all the different parts you puzzle together, you puzzle together. And on the Android, it's not possible. It's just one solution uh, all in one. Okay, so there is a, a question from Texas. I talked to him in the Digital Breakfast. What feature are you most looking forward to that isn't rolled out yet? Yeah. This is a great question because when you look in the in the roadmap, there are so many updates. But maybe you have heard that I'm a big fan of Microsoft Loop. And what we have seen <laughs> be, before, or what we can use right now, is not, not 10% of that what will be. And also already this 10% are so great. So uh, what I'm very, very happy when we have Microsoft Loop on all platforms from Office 365, using it on every app and, and every tool, and especially, especially in the Teams meetings. This is so cool. Uh, maybe I cannot talk about it because it's under NDA, but uh, what everybody can see in the videos that there might be uh, loop solutions, just like a gender task list that you can, and uh, notes, for your meeting. This is so cool, guys. Everybody can work within the meeting and type, and it's so great. So just watch out for Microsoft Loop. You have to Google it. So you have to wait for Ignite, I think, in May. And yeah, um, yeah for me, it's update. shared channels. I'm looking forward for that. I hope we will get it in end of March. My part is user adoption and change management, and the user adoption for shared channels this is a huge thing. I, I, I don't know if this will change everything in what we've done before. So yeah, we, yeah I, I've been at the uh, at, um, at the team in Redmond uh, as the MVPs. We have a special view on the on the in the early view on all what coming up, and you cannot imagine how many sessions we had on shared channels to yeah to see how this works and what will bring this to the customers. So I'm very excited to see and how this works then. Yeah, I think we have to do a lot of governance workshops again. Um, but okay, yeah, so a lot of great news and new features. And uh, yeah, Loop is very ex exciting. I think it looks like a little bit like Notion. You know Notion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so that is the answer from Microsoft about what why Notion is growing like super fast. And now Microsoft says, oh, good, good software. Okay, yeah, I, I like it too. And yeah, four meetings would be very, very nice. Okay, so I think we are in, at the end of the session and the next session will start in a few minutes. So from my side, thanks a lot for the news and hope we see us in real life very soon. Uh, we will see. So um, we will end this session together and yeah, hopefully we have a nice conference today in English. Okay, so thanks a lot, Alex. <laughs> And um, <laughs> sorry for my English, guys. Have a great day. <laughs> See you. <laughs>